We passed our stress test. Thank you for being the first person to do that. Um, so I'm going to talk about how we're going to accomplish these things. We talked about why we're here, who we are, the what is this uh, redesign of an ideal future state for trauma clinical guidance nationally, and then talking about how we do that. So the first thing we're going to focus on is empathy. So we recognize that effective teams have empathy for each other's perspective and therefore are able to collaborate more effectively. And we have some specific strategies in our program that will cultivate us being able to do that. So we have some marketing sciences, director level people in development um, here to facilitate us through these user stories groups. So you will see additional information in your program, but I wanna demystify some of that now because I recognize that it's foreign. Essentially, let me keep going. Essentially, the uh, user story is a way of identifying end user needs. Context inquiry, as we would call it in implementation science, needs assessment, as we would call it in quality improvement. Um, and we are grounded in the fact that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And to do that effectively, we need to understand who each other is and what we need. So in those sessions, you will say, as a blank, as a director of a level one trauma center, as a patient, as a nurse, as a global partner, I need blank in order to apply clinical gui guidance in my context, in order to develop a resource that's useful for others. And the facilitators will prompt you about how to fill these first and last spaces in. And then the empathy piece is that you are assigned to groups strategically. There are people in there group who represents the cohort that you are talking about. There are people in the group who are patients, who are rural providers. And then there are many of you who are assigned to a group specifically because you are not. For us to walk a mile in somebody else's shoes and to understand the needs of other communities beyond our own. And I want to emphasize that it is easy to jump to a solve. And we joked that an app, like we could all just say like, let's just make an app and let's get out of here. We're not here today to talk about form, we're here to talk about function. What are the key needs that are currently unmet by the approach we have now from the perspective of our various end user groups? So today we talk about key functions. What we develop needs to be XYZ, open access, accessible, et cetera. And then we will go through a process of prioritizing those. You got an information sheet in your paper, nothing's recorded, your name won't be on anything, everything will just be aggregate, but you may see a manuscript with some user stories, MVP stuff in there. If anybody has any questions or concerns, come to me directly. You obviously do not have to participate in these sessions. We also will be grounded in the fact that we are gonna work to be easy to please, but hard to satisfy. So we recognize as we're developing a product, we're developing something that we find will be useful to our end users and that will change the world and limit human suffering. We're gonna have to define our key functions and then build something that solves for those, recognizing that we adapt, we iterate, we will not have an immediate solve that is everyone's dream. From a practical standpoint, there's some adult learning theory that has played into what we're doing here today. Adults do best at integrating information when it's one to three input to output. In most instances, it's 100% input and then lunch of just your staring at the wall and then more input. We work hard to make this an input output experience. You have a little note catcher in your program to encourage you that as you're getting tired, it's after lunch, et cetera, to force yourself to think, what is this person talking about that's relevant to this ideal future state? for what we're trying to accomplish in trauma clinical guidance. So you got notes under each topic. And then at the bottom, tomorrow we're gonna to do what's called a minimum viable product session where our facilitators use what the, we learn together in the end user sessions to prioritize our, priority, prioritize our priorities for audience, risk, objectives, and key performance indicators. So you'll hear a lot more about this and be coached through all of that. It doesn't have to make total sense now, um, but you can ask questions if you have them. Again, to the adult learning theory stuff, Agile methodology, methodology is something from software that we're kind of using in some context here. And this is some of our grounding framework, right? This is what we submitted to the AHRQ when we asked them for money of how we were gonna be innovative. That we recognize again, saying it in different words, that every voice here matters. Every pet perspective of, is of equal value. Elliot encouraged us to use first names because it's either all last names or all first names, I think. So you can also come see me if you'd like us to say no first names, please. But otherwise, I think we err on the side of we're either all Mr., Mrs., Doctor, et cetera, or we're all first names. Um, also for inclusivity, my phone number is in the program booklet. It's up here. 
If you don't want to click your button and ask a question at the end of a session, text me and I'll ask it for you anonymously. For big picture, this is the first in a three year conference series where we first conceptualize and prioritize, and then we co design a solution. And then we go back to the government and ask for some money for an R18, probably, to kick off that solution. But we recognize that in year three, we also talk about sustainability. And that won't be a primary focus today, but we recognize that, that none of this is free. And so we'll have to talk about sustainability in the subsequent years once we identify our MVP, our minimum viable product. And then last, I'd leave you with, this is intentionally ambitious and also feasible. People overestimate what they can do in a year and underestimate what they can do in a decade. Progress is not inevitable. We recognize that there's going to be a lot of barriers and we want you to raise your hand. Naysayers are welcome. Now is the time to say that's not going to work and here's why. And we also recognize that most hurdles are overcomable if we're persistent in the same direction, which is our intention. Last thing I'll leave you with, and maybe while Vicki's coming up to the stand, if you guys can turn to um, whoever you're next to, remote colleagues, you can write a note to yourself. But one thing that I'll start us with and we're also going to end with in the post-conference survey is who do we need to make sure joins us in this endeavor? You guys don't know who's here yet, so it's hard to say who's missing, but generally who's left out of this conversation, right? Like we have we have done our best to open our eyes, but we recognize we still have blind spots. And so please keep that in mind. It's on your note catcher also. We'll talk about it at the end of the day of who are we missing in this conversation. Okay, thank you.